So what a disaster. Uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame game was. Uh, it didn't even happen. Uh, they announced, of course, Monday afternoon that they would uh, only refund the fans who bought tickets for two Sundays, canceled the game. It would receive uh, its whatever. You get a refund, basically. Uh, and it was just bad. I mean, the ceremony was great. That was fun. The Brett Favre, Orlando Pace, uh, even Kevin Green, they had some really, really good speeches. Uh, but we're all looking forward to the game. Finally, the first Sunday without football where everybody's tweeting, everybody's excited, and then we get some idiot to do a terrible job, multiple idiots actually, to put the wrong paint and to not get that field ready. You had one job. You had one job. You had all spring, all summer. I don't care if there's a concert. Maybe you should have scheduled it beforehand so you had the whole week to get the field prepared. And this and this isn't the first time. This is a, It's coming to uh, people's eyes and ears for the first time. But if you, if you think back, remember last season, and, and the reason I remember is because D'Angelo Williams of the Steelers uh, tweeted about it and it reminded me, and it was others, that – that field was pretty bad because last year there was a small talk about it, that the field was very, you know, it was rough. It wasn't right. Um, and also they ended up losing, I believe, a kicker or a punter who ended up tearing a, a ligament in his knee out for the whole year. Right. And now you have this and it's just come on, guys. You're the first game back. You have all spring and summer to do one job, and that's to get that field ready for one game. And the entire year, and you can't even do that. You can't even get a simple paint job right. <sighs> Whatever. But let's talk about some positives. Now, the 2016 Pro Football Hall of Fame induction was really great. It was. It was. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Brett Favre had a good speech. It went a little bit longer, but we all, I think we all knew it was going to go pretty long. Um, but now it is time to look at the potential of the 2017 class, which I will be there for one reason. And I'm, I'm, oof, I'm ready. I am ready. So, again, thank you, Brett Favre, Tony Dungy, not really Barbara Harrison. I don't like him. Uh, Orlando Pace, uh, Pace uh, Kevin Green, Ken Stabler, Dick Stanfield, and Eddie DeBartolo Jr. You guys were great. But now it's time to talk about the 2017 class. And I'm excited because you see here, you see here, you see there. You see back there. Do I have anything else? Oh, and you see here? I'm a Chargers and TCU fan. That's because of one reason. And it all happened because of one guy. Ladanian Tomlinson. He is going to be eligible for the first time for the NFL Hall of Fame. And I am excited. He will be the first he will be a guaranteed first ballot. There's no way he does not get in. Uh, and, and and that's why I'm gonna be there. That is why I'm gonna be there. I Said it after, um, I don't exactly know when I said it, but I just knew I was committed to doing it. What, whatever it took, I was going to go to the Hall of Fame uh, ceremony and possible game. Might as well I could, could be there for the ceremony. Might as well go for the game uh, because of LaDainian Le- Tomlinson. Uh, I was blessed to have the opportunity to meet him and get his autograph uh, on a jersey, which I need to get framed. I have it uh, <laughs> wrapped up. I just don't have it framed, which I should. Um, and he's by far my favorite player of all time. He's the reason I got into football. He's the reason I love TCU so much. He's the reason I'm a Chargers fan because right now I would not be a Chargers fan because we'll talk about that later. Uh, and I, I met him once and I would love to see him on the biggest stage of his career, uh, being inducted into the uh, NFL, uh, NFL Hall of Fame. But besides Lydani and Tomlinson, there will be several other notable players who will be in the Hall of Fame, uh, who will be eligible for the first time in 2017, but I don't believe. Any of them will get in their first time, other than LaDainia Thompson. You have Brian Dawkins, one of my favorite safeties of all time. Uh, Donovan McNabb, which, solid quarterback, but, you know, not going to be Hall of Fame. Uh, you have Chad Ochocinco Johnson, who's eligible. Remember the time he put on the Hall of Fame jacket and said, class of 20, and he had question mark, question mark? Could it be 2017? You have Jason Taylor and Hines Award, but... Again, I don't see them getting the call for 2017. Not saying that they won't get in at some point. I believe they will, but not next year. Now, selection rules stipulate that at least four people will get inducted each year with a maximum of eight, which it's going to be 
eight. It's just, just usually what it is. Now, to be inducted, a finalist must receive 80% of support from the 46-person selection committee. And the 2017 Fo- Pro Football Hall of Fame class will be announced on television, of course, Fox Television, a uh, special that is set to air February 4th, 2017, a day before Super Bowl 51. So who will be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2017? Let's go ahead and go through because some of the guys, uh, these are just, uh, I believe I picked five or six, five. I picked five uh, that will be selected because, you know, there's going to be a, the senior uh, electee and I think what they do also a management guy. I don't want to go that far. I just wanted to pick the modern era players and uh, and one coach. So, uh, and no particular order. These are just kind of guys that I just thought. Uh, Kurt Warner, quarterback. Warner will be hoping that third time's a charm in 2017. This guy needs to be in. Although a two-time NFL MVP was named Hall of Fame finalist during each of the first two years of eligibility, he didn't make the cut either time. Now, Warner's story is one of the most incredible tales in NFL history, and that's why I believe it deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. We all know it. Grocery store clerk bagging the groceries. Goes to the AFL, gets his chance, and then on to the NFL Europe, and then becomes part of the greatest show on turf with the, uh, the, with the NFL Rams and is the main guy. He deserves to be in. I think he will get it this year, uh, especially with all the media coverage that he gets from being within a film network. Uh, and just a great guy he is. And his stats, I know he had that rough patch in his career. I think the stat was like 6-22 and 22 as a starting quarterback between the early 2000s, uh, right after he was with the Rams when he was with the Giants and even with the Cardinals. And then finally, he takes the Cardinals, who we all, before he was there, the Cardinals historically – Worst franchise next to right next to the Cleveland. Even the Cleveland Browns had better success than than the Arizona Cardinals. Believe it or not, they did. Then he finally gets there, and 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 then we have that big run, that Super Bowl run. And ever since then, the Cardinals have been you know doing this. Yeah, they might have a little quick dip, but then they're always back up. And look at where the Cardinals are now. Kurt Warner and Larry Fitzgerald with the main things for that. I believe Kurt Warner should be in. Next one, ladies and gentlemen, get your popcorn ready. Canton, Ohio, because Terrell Owens is going to be there. Now, I know people are going to say, whoa, 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 whoa. They they're going to keep holding him out because all the antics he had is the entire – no, 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 no. Look at the stats, and I believe the only – well, I mean, there's two reasons. I believe because of the antics, but also Jerry Rice, which has been named as – Arguably the greatest NFL wide receiver in history. Number one receiver, right? He was first ballot Hall of Fame. He's the only wide receiver in NFL history to be inducted into the Hall of Fame on his first ballot, his first time. I don't think they want to give T.O. that either. So now that this is going to be his second year for T.O., you got to think Chris Carter's in. Not as good as T.O. And I think Chris Carter keeps crying and he kept crying and blaming and victim blaming all his way through to the Hall of Fame. Whatever. Because when he was on ESPN, just, oh, I'm not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, whatever. I hate Chris Carter. Sorry. Andre Reed, very good. He's in. Tim Brown, he's in. And Marvin Harrison is now in. That leaves Owens, Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt, and Heinz Ward as top receivers that are not in yet and there's a good chance that one of them is is going to be in and T.O.'s the main guy of that group uh I mean there's there's no reason you look at his stats in his 15-year career six-time pro bowler racked up 1,078 catches for 15,934 yards 153 touchdowns in terms of NFL history ladies and gentlemen Owens is six all-time in receptions third all-time in receiving yards, and second all-time in touchdown catches. It's hard to argue against those numbers, especially who the receivers are now in the Hall of Fame. Really, the only way Owens won't be inducted in 2017 is if he does something stupid again or he actually signs with the NFL team, which I don't see any any team signing him, 
But every offseason, Owens insists that he could still play even though he's 40-something years old. And if he did sign with the team, even just uh, obviously not a tryout, but if he signs with a contract with the team, practice squad, doesn't matter, it pushes his eligibility for another five years. So even like what he did with the Seattle Seahawks when he was there for that short time, if he does that, another five years so he's eligible. I don't think that happens. Of course, the next guy who will be in is LaDainian Tomlinson. Uh, Now, there's also another running back in, Terrell Davis, Denver Broncos. And he's been in there for the past couple years. And this isn't good news because now LT's in. They haven't had two running backs in the Hall of Fame. And I believe, uh, of course, I didn't put the stat in. Uh, it, it's been a long, long, long time. I think it was in the seventies or eighties, uh, when they had, uh, two running backs inducted at the same time. Maybe they do it this year, but if the committee had a pick between Davis and Tomlinson, you look at the numbers, it's LT all the way through. If they want to look at Super Bowls, of course, Terrell Davis, but I mean, Thomas had put together what might go down in NFL history as the best, greatest, all-around season ever by a running back. In 2006, Tomlinson won the league MVP award after scoring an NFL record 31 touchdowns, 28 rushing, and three receiving. To put that into context, no player, no player ever has scored over 23 touchdowns in a season, or well, since then, excuse me, and no other player in NFL history has ever scored 30 touchdowns in a single season. Darian Tomlinson's NFL record-breaking, record-breaking year, he led the NFL rushing with 1,800 yards. Uh, he also had 56 catches and 508 yards receiving. Uh, Tomlinson's ability to come out of the back or catch out of the backfield has been one of the best. In 2003, he finished fourth in the NFL out of all receivers, all running back, all skill players, he finished fourth in receptions after hauling in 100 passes in 2003. Uh, he rushed for over 1,200 yards in seven straight seasons, was named first team all pro three times. And again, the biggest edge Davis has over Tomlinson is the fact that he has a Super Bowl MVP award and two Super Bowl rings. That's it. During the, uh, Tomlinson's 11 year career, Tomlinson only played in two conference titles and never made it to a Super Bowl. And that wasn't his fault when you think about it. Because if if you're going to look, if the argument comes, well, postseason success. Check this out. Thompson, it wasn't LT's fault when Nate Kading missed the game-winning field goal in overtime in 2004 against the New York Jets. Right? It wasn't LT who fumbled Tom Brady's inter- interception in 2006 that would have won the game. He actually had his best playoff game in in that game. It, he did everything he was supposed to. Yeah, people want to bring up the injuries. He still played through it. Still played through it. In 2007, 2006 and 2007 were the the, the best two years for the Chargers and, and their best chance of making the Super Bowl and possibly winning it. 2006, they had the interception, and I forgot if it was uh, Clinton Hart or something, Neil, or Keel or something like that, uh, had the interception, decided to keep running with it. All he had to do was slide. Ball pops out, Patriots recover, end up kicking a game-winning field goal, game over. Chargers lose at home, hosting the New England Patriots. In 2007, and in that 2006 season, that was obviously LT's big year, uh, best playoff game, and best season overall, and also uh, Chargers were the number one seed. That was divisional playoffs. 14-2 and two record. Go into the next year. They uh they go through they're eleven and five they win the AFC West they host the Tennessee Titans they beat Vince Young and the Titans next game they are at on the road against the Indianapolis Colts who were projected to win that game Chargers end up losing Philip Rivers to a torn ACL which he still played through uh, Antonio Gates terrible turf toe uh, Sean Merriman torn ACL two other offensive linemen hurt LT ends up getting hurt in that game. They had to pull up. They had to put in Billy Volick as their backup tight end, and Michael Turner, who you know obviously became Michael Turner as we know, uh, put them in, and they ended up winning the game. 
go on and then of course they end up facing as they're injured they have to go on the road and play at the time undefeated New England Patriots Philip Rivers still plays LT tried to play didn't work out man that game I lost it about I broke a remote sad throwing a fit I'm so sad <sighs> The glory days. <laughs> the glory days. Uh, anyways, uh, to, to bring it back to postseason success, I'm making this a little too long here. Uh, you know, it's not also that uncommon. Barry Sanders, poor playoff success with Detroit. OJ Simpson rushed for 49 yards in his only playoff game. The Vikings are 1-4 in the playoffs with Adrian Peterson, who's averaged 3.5 yards per carry and has more memorable fumbles than he does touchdowns. Not everyone can beat Terrell Davis. Even the great Jim Brown, 3.65 uh, yards per carry and 1-3 record. Walter Payton, two scores in nine games, 3.5 yards per carry. Usually weren't effective in playoffs despite winning championships. So what are we going to look at, committee? It's got to be LaDainey Tomlinson. Uh, next one, last two, Morn Anderson, kicker. I got to add a special teams guy in there, and he's, he was a really good kicker. Played for what? You, 25 years. Played for 25 years, and had it finished in the top 10 of field goal percentage 12 years. It's crazy. Last one is a coach, and this one is tough. The fact that Tony Dungy went into the Hall of Fame before Jimmy Johnson and or Don Coryell is disrespectful and just a stupid decision. Now I love Tony Dungy. I have his book. You guys can see it. The Quiet Strengths. Right over there in my bookshelf. And I, I love Tony Dungy. But you compare his stats to Jimmy Johnson and, and maybe not Don Coryell. But Don Coryell created the modern passing game that we all knew. Right? He, he's, he was a genius. He's been eligible for the Hall of Fame for a very long time. They have not let him in. Jimmy Johnson, multiple Super Bowls, created a dynasty. Tony Dungy had Peyton Manning, won the Super Bowl, lost multiple playoff games. Yeah, people are going to say he's responsible for the Buccaneers' success and all this other stuff. Well, I say the same thing. Chargers, LT, wasn't responsible for losing the games. Still happened. Oh, well. Uh, If you compare the two careers, you would quickly see that it's not a competition. Jimmy Johnson. Deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. And I believe he will in 2017, which sucks because they're not going to put two coaches in. Uh, it's, it's a tough call. Jimmy Johnson, Don Coryell, one of them got to get it. Let me know in the comment section who you believe will be in the Hall of Fame class of 2017. Do you agree with the list that I have? Who do you believe will be in? Do you believe T.O. will make it? Do you believe he won't? Do you think Terrell Davis gets in over LaDainia Tomlinson? Do you think Morton Anderson gets in? Who do you believe will be in the Hall of Fame? Let me know in the comment section down below. Follow me on Twitter at Short Sports Show. Oh!